Hi class, in this video I want to talk just about different um, examples of integration by substitution. Um, I have about uh, eight examples picked out for us. I'm going to walk you through each one of them. Um, they're varying difficulty, but hopefully by the end of this video, and if you're following along, um, it'll make sense to you. All right. So the way you work with um, integration by substitution is we want to find the antiderivative of a composite function. All right, so just remember, a composite function, let's let f and g be functions such that f composition g, so that's the composition, you're plugging in g into f. You know, you guys might have seen it as that fog um, part. Anyways, and g prime are continuous on some interval. If capital F is the antiderivative of the outside function, so you're going to hear me say this a bunch today, F is the outside function, G is the inside. All right. Then, if you have the integral of F evaluated at G of X, so the inside is G of X, but on the outside we have G of X derivative. All right. So F is on the outside, G of X is on the inside, and this is the derivative of the inside. Okay. Well, that's just equal to the antiderivative of F evaluated at G. All right. In my first video, I did. Um, just one or two examples that were pretty simple. So we'll start with some easy ones and work into harder ones. All right, so let's look at this one right here. So evaluate the integral of x squared plus 1 quantity squared times 2x. All right, you have an outside. You have something on the inside of that square. All right, and then if you think about this, what is the derivative of x squared plus 1? Well, the derivative of the inside is this, 2x. Right, that's a key how you know that it's going to be uh, the substitution method. All right, so you're always going to let u be the inside. All right, you take the differential, so du is equal to uh, 2x dx. Now I'm going to show you a different way that I did it in the first video how to do these problems. All right, it's just an alternative way. You don't have to do it this way, but um, like immediately you could see that you could substitute in du for 2x dx. But if you wanted to, you could get dx by itself by dividing the 2x over. All right, now let's plug in all this stuff and see what happens. All right, so I've got the integral of not x squared plus 1 squared, but u is equal to x squared plus 1, so it becomes u squared. I'm going to leave this 2x right here, there, and I'm going to replace dx with du over 2x. Now watch what will happen. You'll notice this and this will cancel out. So when you do this is what you're left with. You're left with the integral of u squared du, which is simply the power rule, and that immediately integrates as u cubed over 3 plus the constant of integration c. All right, but if you look back at the original problem, it was in terms of x, so we got to take our u and do the last thing and replace our u with what we had substituted it in for. This is not too bad. If you take the derivative of this to check, you would get this right here. All right. Let's try this one right here. All right, if I have the integral of 5 cosine of 5x dx. Now this looks kind of simple, maybe, perhaps. But yeah, forgive me, I had to grab a sip of coffee there. Because um, it's like, oh, I know what the, uh, what the integral of cosine is. That's a piece of cake. Um, but it's, it's complicated because I have, now listen to how I say this, 5x on the inside of the cosine function. All right, so when I have something besides um, x on the inside, I'm going to have to use this uh, substitution method. So I'm going to let u be what's on the inside. And then the differential, so du is equal to 5 dx. I'm going to get dx by itself, divide the 5 over, and now I'm going to plug it in. All right, so 5 cosine, not of 5x, but of du. dx gets replaced with du over 5. Look what cancels out. And then we know immediately that cosine integrates to sine. And then not sine of u, but our final thing plug back in sine of 5x. All right. All right, let's try this one where it's not perfect. Like in the previous two examples, things perfectly canceled out. But let's do one where it doesn't perfectly cancel out. So here's how you know that it's still a u substitution. I have something here, all right, something on the inside, all right, inside, and its derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x, but I just have an x here, but man, it's close. It's only different by a constant. 
That's okay. When it's just different by a constant, you still use the uh, substitution method. So I'm going to, again, still let u be the inside. So I'm going to let u equal whatever's inside here, x squared plus 1. The differential du is equal to 2x dx. I'm going to divide over what's in front of the dx. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in. Right, so I have the integral of x. This crazy stuff in here became u. dx gets replaced with du over 2x. But if you look here, what will cancel out? The 2x's. And that's OK. So then it's very simple. You're going to just get u squared du over 2. When you integrate this, it's just the general power rule. All right, this integrates as u cubed over 3. Well, don't forget the 3 in the bottom you have is a 2. So 3 times 2 gets you that 6. And then finally, your last step, plug back in for you. So it's okay if you're off by a constant. That is not a big deal at all, okay? At all. All right, let's look at this one. So surprisingly, this one, you're like, oh, uh, you know, maybe I just changed it to 1 half, um, the square root to 1 half, but it's, but it's not that easy. If it was just the square root of x, you could just do the general power rule, but you can't do that here because there's something underneath the radical. All right, well, if that's still the case, that's, that's all right. Um, if you're like, oh, what's underneath or what's inside the radical complicates it, let me let u equal that. So u is equal to 2x minus 1. Do the differential. du is equal to the derivative of this is 2 dx. So now I can replace everything under here with um, a u. I can replace the dx with du divided by 2. And look at that. Now it becomes the integral of the square root of u, du over 2. Well, that's incredibly easy to integrate. You just change this to u to the 1 half, and you do the general power rule. And you get this right here. Just multiplying across, or excuse me, uh, canceling out like this, and subbing back in for u, this is what you get. All right, so something like this, even though it, it seems like it should be really easy, you do have to do a u substitution whenever there's anything underneath here. All right, what I would like you to do now, uh, and if you have the PowerPoint printed out, you can see the answers, but um, I would like you to pause the video and look at these five integrals right here. All right, I'll cover it up on the note sheet. Uh, see if you can figure out what you would have u be, all right? And then we're not going to integrate these, just say you know what you would let u be, and then we'll go from there. So pause the video, and each of these integrals, figure out what you would let u be. All right, if you unpause the video now, I'm going to walk you through it. And it's always something like something, and then I see its derivative. So this is underneath this or on the inside. So I'm going to let u be that. Here, you could actually solve this very easily by foiling out, but you could do a u substitution. I see something. What is the derivative of x squared plus x? It's 2x plus 1. So I could let u be that. Something inside or underneath the radical. Well, the derivative of this is this, actually. So I can let u be what's underneath there. This one's a little weird. It's like, ah, I don't even, wouldn't even know how to begin to, to, to tackle this problem. Well, if you look here, what is the derivative of 1 minus 2x squared? Well, it's minus 4x. So you would literally let u be that. All right, this one is a little bit more complicated. All right, and um, but once you see it the first time, um, it's not too bad. Cosine squared of x is the same thing of cosine of x in parentheses squared. So you have something underneath the radical, or excuse me, underneath the square or inside would be cosine of x. And then its derivative, or something that looks like its derivative, is right out here. So you would let u equal cosine of x. All right, let's do some problems. All right, some additional ones here. Just uh, the more examples you see, the easier this, this gets. All right, so I'm going to integrate x squared sine of x cubed. So x cubed is inside 
the sine function. Well, if it's inside the sine function, I'm going to let u equal x cubed. All right, differential, so that means du is equal to the derivative of this, which is 3x squared. Divide the 3x squared over. All right, so you have du divided by 3x squared is equal to dx. Now let's just plug them in. So I have the integral of x squared sine of u du over 3x squared. Just by looking at this, what do you notice cancels out? Yeah, the x squared, those are gone. So then you just have to literally integrate sine of u du over 3. All right, you can take the 3 out as 1 third. All right, and then sine obviously integrates as negative cosine of u. Well, the original problem was in terms of x, so take the u, plug back in x cubed, and this is what you get. Piece of cake. All right, let's do another one. Whew, this one's pretty complicated. All right. Sine squared of 3x is equal to cosine of 3x dx. Okay. First off, I would have this rewritten as the following. Take that sine squared and move it on the outside. Now look at this. You have something on the inside of the squared. This is inside the squared term. Well, what is the derivative of sine? Looks like it's close to it right here. So I'm going to have to let u be this crazy thing in here. Alright, so I'm going to let u equal sine of 3x. Now when you take the derivative of this, you need to use the chain rule. Alright, so du, derivative of sine is cosine of 3x, and then the derivative of 3x is 3. Alright, let me take this and divide this over. So I get du divided by 3 cosine of 3x is equal to dx. And then let me take this and just literally plug it all back in. So this crazy thing right here, this really hard trig integral, I can rewrite as the integral not of sine of 3x squared, but of u squared. Leave this cosine of 3x right there. And then dx gets replaced with du divided by 3 cosine of 3x. Well, look at this. What cancels out? Cosine 3x, cosine 3x. So all you're left with is u squared over 3 du, which is a really simple power rule. All right. I can even factor out the 1 third. This integrates as u cubed over 3 times 1 third gets you u cubed over 9. And then simply your last step, take this and plug it back in. So even these crazy, crazy trig ones all right, can be, um, can be solved really, really simply with the u substitution. All right, let's try this one. This one's a little bit more complicated. All right, I see this. I have x times the square root of 2x minus 1 dx. It's like, ah, I see something underneath. Well, here's what's complicated. This, If I were to let u equal 2x minus 1, the derivative of this would be 2, but I'd have this, like, extra x hanging out there. So it's not, not like really easy like this one where it's like u and then its derivative is right outside. All right, but we're still going to start this this exact same way. I'm going to let u be what's underneath the radical. All right, that's okay. That means du is equal to 2dx. Divide over the 2. So I can replace this with u. I can replace dx with du over 2. But the problem is, is I have this crazy little x still hanging out there. Well, if you look back up here, there's a relationship between u and x. So let me just solve this for x. Add the 1 over, divide by 2. I can literally replace this x with u plus 1 over 2. All right, let me plug those in and see what happens. At the integral, x, all I did was transform this original equation here in terms of x. This becomes the square root, not of this, but the square root of u. And then I replace dx with du over 2. All right, let me clean this up a little. All right, 2 times 2 down here gives me the 1 fourth. Distribute the square root of x here. u times the square root of u gets you u to the 3 halves, and so on. And then right here, look at this. Whew, piece of cake. This is just a simple um, uh, power rule to integrate both these functions. 
very, very easily to integrate this. 3 halves plus 1 is 5 halves. 5 halves in the bottom flips up is 2 fifths. Same thing over here. 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. 3 halves in the bottom flips up as 2 thirds. At this point, you have it solved. You just need to take and sub back in for u. So I replaced u with 2x minus 1, and I simply distributed the 1 fourth and simplified. No, not too bad. So even something complicated like this, that um, you don't know exactly what it is, right? you can um, still solve for the other variable because you know the relationship. All right, so we've done indefinite integrals. Let's do two definite integrals just to see the procedure. All right, so the only thing that's different about this is the bounds of integration, and there's two different ways you could tackle this. I'll show you both the first way, and then I'll show you the, um, I'll just do one way with our last example. All right, so here I have something underneath or inside the cube. I have something that looks close to its derivative on the outside. So I'm going to let u be the inside. 2x plus 1. That means the differential, du, the, the derivative of this, which is 2x dx. I'm going to divide this over the 2x, so I can replace dx with this. Let me plug it in, all right, just like before. I'm going to go back to the bounds of integration in a little bit. All right. So I leave this x here. This gets replaced with u. dx gets replaced with du over 2x. x is obviously cancel out. All right, so note that there are no upper and lower limits of integration here. All right, so now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a two-way. I'm going to integrate this real quickly. All right, u to the th 3 becomes u to the 4th over 4. Well, the 4 in the bottom gets multiplied by 2. That's how you get the 8. So now I've got to go back in and do my um, bounds of integration, all right, or my limits of integration. So there's two ways you could do this. Um, we must determine the first way is new upper and lower limits by substituting the old ones in for x, all right, in here. So like, how did I get this 2? Well, the original one was 1. Well, when x is 1, 1 squared plus 1, u becomes 2. How did I get the 1? We'll take the 0. 0 squared plus 1 gets me 1. So when x is 0, u is 1. Now I literally can take these and plug it in using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, 2 to the 4th power is 16 over 8. Minus 1 to the 4th power over 8 is this, is 15 eighths. All right, that's one way you could do it. Notice when you did this definite, you actually didn't have to substitute back in for u, which is sometimes that's pretty easy. Or you could use the old limits, all right, if you just substitute back in um, x squared plus 1. So like instead, if you not left it in terms of u, but plug back in x squared plus 1, notice that the bounds of integration, 0 and 1, stay the same. And you literally get the same answer. So it doesn't matter which one you do. Sometimes I like this. I think it's a little bit easier. Um, ultimately, it doesn't matter. And the reason being is like if you plugged in 1, uh, 1 squared plus 1 gets me 2. And then you would take 2 to the 4th power. So you're, you're, you're really basically doing the same thing, um, but whichever method you like. All right, let's do one more, and we'll do this method, okay, instead of substituting back in. All right, so let's take a look at this. All right, let's find the area, all right, underneath this curve here, whatever this looks like, all right, between 1 and 5. All right, complicated again. What's underneath the radical is what's complicating this. All right. Um, I'm going to try, though, for this one. I'm going to let u all right, equal this, the whole thing, the square root of 2x minus 1. We'll see what happens. If I square it to get rid of the radical, all right, that means u squared is equal to 2x minus 1. Now watch what happens when I solve this for um, x in a little bit. Well, first off, let me find the differential. 2u du is equal to 2dx. All right, that means u du is equal to dx. Over here, solving this directly, wherever I see an x, I can replace it with u squared plus one over two. Let's um, let's see what happens when I go to um, substitute in. All right, 
Wherever I see an x, I can replace it with u squared plus 1 over 2. That's awesome. This, down at the bottom, is just u. The 2 down here is from this. And dx gets replaced with u du. Ha, look at that. Piece of cake. It worked out perfectly. All right, if I take out the 1 half and the bottom and um, simplify this, I get the following. Obviously here, where do the u's go? This u and this u cancels. Incredibly easy to integrate. This integrates as u cubed over 3. This integrates as u. So our bounds of integration here, all right? I am not going to plug in 1 and 5. I'm going to take 5 and plug it in here, all right? So for example, 2 times 5 is 10, minus 1 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. If I do the same thing with 1, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1, square root of 1 is 1. Now if you plug these in, you know, 3 into this, and then 1 into this and subtract it, it will end up simplifying to 16 over 3. All right, this one was a little bit more complicated than the other ones. And that's the end of our lecture. I encourage you, I posted um, two PDF files for you to read over, and the second one is really important because it's literally just like 20 examples of this stuff. Um, and sometimes it takes a lot of trial and error. Um, but download both. Um, Rewatch this video if you need it. You have the PowerPoints. And um, good luck on your uh, homework this week.